Dr. Theodore Ho is a neuroscientist, stem cell biologist, biogerontologist, currently at Stanford University. Dr. Ho completed a four-year joint bachelor's master's degree program at Harvard University and then received his PhD in biophysics from UCSF, where he discovered new mechanisms of stem cell aging. He is the Merit Award winner, International Society for Stem Cell Research in 2017 and was in the Forbes 30 Under 30 Science category in 2019. And with that, let me start the interview. So, Dr. Ho, uh, thank you very much for taking the time to join us today. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. So in your TED Talk, and also you wrote a paper about stem cells and autophagy and how autophagy affects stem cells and and um, stem cell exhaustion is one of the key hallmarks of aging. Mm. So, um, can you talk? So, can you explain a what is autophagy, um, and what's so special about stem cells? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think so. Autophagy generally is this cellular recycling process, right? Mm. So things inside of a cell. Um, as they're needed for something else, or as they become older, degraded, they need to be recycled. Um, and so these various things inside a cell over time in certain situations or stress situations, they'll go into these autophagosomes, they'll be broken down right into their building blocks, which are then released and can be reused for something else. Um, mm. And so a very classical example of autophagy is when you starve an organism or cells, um, they'll activate autophagy to recycle things that are not so necessary immediately and then use those building blocks to make energy so that cells can survive, right? So it's mm -hmm. sort of this starvation recycling process. And that's sort of how it's you know, traditionally studied. Um, but it's been found to be a lot more important for many other types of stresses. Mm -hmm. So other things that aren't sort of food and starvation related can induce autophagy as a protective response. Um, and, and most relevantly for me and, and sort of for you maybe is that autophagy has been very linked to longevity and aging. Um, mm -hmm. in a lot of different studies and a lot of different animals and tissues and cells, right? So there are genes where if you increase autophagy, animals will be healthier, or live longer. Whereas if you remove this ability to undergo autophagy, you'll be less healthy and die earlier. Mm -hmm. um, so there's this link um, with autophagy and aging and longevity, but it sort of varies by different study, right? The tissue and the animal you look at and the specific question of, of the people um, running the experiments all find sort of these varying roles of autophagy. Um, mm. But it's, it's important for aging and longevity. Um, and stem cells, so stem cells basically, right, are these special cells. They're these rare cells that have the ability, one, to self-renew, and two, to differentiate into other types of cells. And so most cells in your body can't do this, right? They're, they're one type of cell and they stay that way, or maybe they can make more cells, but only of the same type. Um, in this case, stem cells, are sort of the parent cell that can both make more of themselves and also make all the other cells in the tissue, right? And so usually, you know, people talk about embryonic stem cells, um, but in terms of my kind of research and, and sort of um, the things that we look at, it, we were really talking about adult tissue specific stem cells. Mm -hmm. So that means within a specific tissue in your body or in animals' bodies, there's a stem cell that sits sort of at the top of this hierarchy and is responsible for making the rest of the tissue, um, all the cell types in that tissue. So for example, and so what I worked on most um, are hematopoietic stem cells, which make blood, right? Mm. And so there's these special stem cells and people often use them in transplantations, et cetera, for therapies. But there's their normal basic function is they, they sit there and they're sort of quiescent, they don't do so much, but when they're needed, they'll differentiate, they'll make more stem cells, and then all those stem cells will make more and then they'll divide slowly down into the other cell types of the blood. And so they make, they're responsible for making all the blood cells, the many different types of blood cells. And so stem cells are very important, obviously because they're responsible for that entire tissue, right? So it's sort of, they're the producer of all the cells in a tissue. And so you really have to make sure that they're healthy and you know, when they age or become dysfunctional, that affects the entire tissue. So you can right. imagine, Every stem cell, you know, all different types in your body are all important for different reasons, but the, within a tissue, right, those are the those are the really essential cells. Right. And so the blood stem cells are actually in the bone marrow. Is that correct? They mostly reside in bone marrow. Yeah, they can they come out and they can move around the blood system and sit other places, but their main home is the bone marrow. Okay. Um, 
so okay so we have the stem cells and you said as we age they change could you talk about so how, how do they change as we get older mm. so the 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 overall general you know um model in the field is that as we age stem cells decline in both number and function so we have fewer stem cells as we get older and they're less functional and less healthy mm. they can't do as much and what they do do often is dysfunctional something's wrong you know they make the wrong type of cell the cells they make aren't as healthy themselves etc um, so that's the general uh, model However, it varies, of course, by specific type of stem cell. So in the case mm. of hematopoietic stem cells, they actually increase in total number over aging, which is very su surprising relative to mm. the other types of stem cells. However, the function of every individual stem cell is worse, right? So you have more stem cells, but each one has a reduced ability to make blood. And so that's the sort of the, what happens with hematopoietic stem cells. Um, whereas most other tissue stem cells, like muscle stem cells, neural stem cells, decline in both number and in function. Um, and there are a lot of different phenotypes. Again, it depends by stem cell, but often they acquire, you know, replication stress, maybe DNA damage, maybe reactive oxygen species. Um, so a lot of the sort of classical symptoms and signs of aging, telomere shrinking, senescence, these things that we see in other cell types also happen to stem cells as they age. And this results in sort of this reduced regenerative ability and reduced ability um, to maintain tissues. Right, so it gives me a thought. So the stem cell should be quiescent most of the time. Is that right? I mean, it's just sits there waiting for some event to say, okay, it's time to go make some more of yourself. Um, so A, is that kind of correct? And B, if it's just quiescent, then would it, why, would it get uh, like reactive oxygen species stress because it shouldn't be very metabolically active? Mm -hmm. Yeah, great question. So again, you know, it varies by different cell type, tissue type, stem cell type, but a lot of them, such as hematopoietic stem cells, yes, are generally quiescent, right? So they're sleeping, they're not doing much, they're just waiting to be called upon in an emergency, right? Mm -hmm. So if you have a sudden catastrophic loss of blood, um, you know, your body tells you you need more blood. So the stem cells will become activated and start reproducing, you know, more stem cells, progenitor cells and blood cells. So while they are quiescent, you know, you're absolutely right. In a sense, it's sort of like a protective hibernation. They're less active. They're less metabolically active. So in theory, they should acquire less, you know, replication, stress, DNA damage, reactive oxygen species. So that's absolutely true. And that's sort of, you know, people have found that to be the case. And then when they come out and they become more active, right, you have this increased activity, increased metabolic activity, reactive oxygen species, and all this stress. And so specifically from, for, for hematopoietic stem cells, we and others have found that that is indeed the case. It's sort of this activation and rapid proliferation and differentiation and this whole process that does stress out the cells. And people have sort of developed these models where if you do repeated replication stress like this, it actually phenot copies a natural aging of the stem cells. So in a sense, they're a, a shorter, you know, they're still young chronologically, but because they've been forced to replicate and be so active, it makes them appear cellularly and molecularly like an old stem cell. Makes sense. So you said, uh, I remember in the TED talk and the, the paper that you wrote, so the stem cells get kind of, there's two types, right? There's ones that don't seem to do autophagy and which is the bulk. And then there's these others which seem to manage to, in some way to continue and, and they are more healthy. I, do we have any idea why that is and, and how we can kind of increase the pool of good ones? Mm. Yeah, great question. So I think, you know, this was one of the most exciting uh, discoveries for me in this work was that identification of these subsets and subpopulations of these stem cells. So basically the, the general thinking in the field of autophagy and aging is that for most animals, for most cell types, autophagy declines with age, right? So mm. in a young, healthy animal and cell, there's, there's high levels of autophagy whenever it's needed and, you know, the cells are healthy. But as you age, generally speaking, people have reported a decrease in autophagy activity and ability and function. So in other stem cells as well, such as muscle stem cells. So we actually were the first to find that th this population of stem cells, specifically hematopoietic stem cells, that there was some of these old stem cells that had higher levels of autophagy than normal. 
right? Mm. Higher than a young, healthy stem cell. Mm. And so, like you said, you know, what we did is we said, well, this is really interesting. What, what's the significance of this? What does this mean? So we took these two populations, right? And we separated them out. We took the old stem cells with the high levels of autophagy and those with low. And we separately um, characterized them and studied them, their functional ability, their cellular and, cellular and molecular sort of components and health. Um, and we found that those old stem cells with a high autophagy were much more um, robust and functional, and they resembled a young stem cell more than those with low autophagy. And so the idea, right, is that autophagy is a protective mechanism, a stress response mechanism, and keeps the cell healthier. Um, and specifically in our study, we found it's really important for controlling metabolism, right? So to keep those stem cells in the quiescent state where they're not replicating quickly and where they're just resting until they're needed, autophagy was important to sort of keep them in the low metabolic state to stay quiescent. And so when cells lose autophagy, when we knocked it out genetically, um, or if, if they lose their ability, let's say some set of old stem cells have a reduced ability with aging perhaps, then they over proliferate, over activate and get exhausted. So we think that the, the, uh, the idea is that these old stem cells with high autophagy, because they have this high autophagy can maintain a quiescent, healthier state and prevent themselves from over proliferating, differentiating and becoming exhausted. And so why might some cells have more than, than mm -hmm. others? You know, it could be, you know, there's been since, since my work and our work on this and our paper, and there's been some other work, very similar looking at metabolism and mitochondria in these, in these um, stem cells. And previously there was some work um, about specific niches, sub niches within the bone marrow closer to a blood vessel, further away from a blood vessel that define different types of sort of subsets of these stem cells. And so sort of my thinking, our thinking on this is that perhaps within the stem cell pool, which we traditionally think of as, you know, a uniform population, which of course it's not, but the idea is we're thinking that perhaps there are a subset that are super, super quiescent and super protective, right? So while most of the stem cells are quiescent and not doing anything, we think there might be a subset that is even more so, right? So mm -hmm. maybe they're further away from the blood vessels and they're with even lower oxygen levels and they stay really, really quiescent. And in, during that process, they use high autophagy to maintain a low metabolism. And with the low oxygen content, the, the autophagy helps them survive. And this may be sort of their phenotype and their mechanism for staying healthier. So it's sort of a um, protection mechanism and sort of a, segregation of cell subsets of stem cell types to sort of protect them even more than the other set. But mm -hmm. that's sort of what we think and sort of based on other work that's been done by us and others. Um, but how, how and exactly why that is, we still don't know. Yeah. Right. Interesting. And, and I assume that we, we have, so therefore we have no, we don't know how we could encourage more of these the autophagy capable stem cells. I mean, any action or that we could take that would encourage them. Yeah. So <clears throat> there's always the idea of stimulating to induce more autophagy and people in other systems, like in muscle stem cells and neural mm -hmm. stem cells have used techniques to increase, to artificially, you know, increase autophagy levels and shown that that does have a beneficial effect. So mm -hmm. you can imagine that might be one route to take. But of course, there's going to be side effects to that. How specific is it? Um, you know, what are the long-term consequences? That's less clear. You can imagine if you, if you are forcing the system to have higher autophagy and to become more quiescent, then perhaps when you do have a traumatic injury or you need those stem cells to be active, maybe they'll be slower to respond, or maybe some of them won't respond because you know they have this artificially high um, autophagy. But you know, some other papers have have tried to look at the metabolic route in studying mitochondria and using specific sort of targets to regulate the metabolism in mitochondria to sort of achieve a similar effect. Um, and so there have been some reports of hematopoietic stem cell sort of rejuvenation um, by targeting certain aspects of their cell biology. Mm -hmm. But again, it's very hard to, um, sometimes it can be very hard to interpret based on the exact experimental setup they use and sort of the controls and really how that relates to you know, the whole organism's health and eventually humans, you know, that's something we, that we're, we're pretty far off from. So it's, I think theoretically, the idea is there, right? We can, the things we discover, the basic science we discover about autophagy, about stem cells, we can then try to develop, you know, targeted methods to, 
target the phenotypes or the pathways to increase the health of our stem cells and, and overall the health of an organism. I think for sure that's, you know, a, a reasonable and a future thing that we will do. Um, but mm -hmm. I think the research is still, it's still very nascent and sort of it's uh, potential clinical applications or anything like that. Right. And so you focused on um, blood stem cells, mm -hmm. blood stem cells. Uh, but it, does this, like the, the autophagy model, does this go across other stem cell types, do you think? Ah, great question. So actually I had, I had the same question, you know, as I was discovering these things and I was wondering how broadly applicable this might be. So we actually did look at a couple other stem cell types. So we looked at mesenchymal stem cells, which make bone, fat, and cartilage. Um, and we looked at neural stem cells in collaboration um, with Anne Brunet's lab, and we found very similar results actually. So when you look at the old stem cell populations um, that you know we usually think of as this uniform population that we sort out and we study, if you use a special autophagy marker and you separated those with high autophagy and low autophagy, again, in these two other tissues and other stem cell types, we found that the ones with high autophagy looked more similar to a young healthy stem cell and they were sort of more functional and mm. had higher regenerative ability than those with low autophagy. So we do think sort of this the model and the importance and the role of autophagy in stem cells maybe is, is more broadly applicable, um, at least so far in these, in these two other tissues as well. Mm, interesting. I hope that you found the video informative. Please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button and choose all for any new video release notifications. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.